Hello again. Ready for literature? Okay, you should have your books open, the apple and the arrow. Turn your book to page two. We're going to pick up where we left off last week. We finished scene one, so you should have one of these completed. I believe maybe group two may have, didn't have to write, finish the whole thing, all right? I'm sorry, not group two, spelling group one, spelling group one, all right? So you're going to have a blank piece of paper like this for the five elements of literature. It should be all blank. We're starting a new scene. So you should have finished one, and we're going to start a new one. On the very top, write chapter one, scene two, and your name and today's date. And today is October 1st, 2020. So you're going to write 10, 1, 20. That's the date. Okay, and we're going to go to the bottom of page two, the very last paragraph. So that would be four lines up if you count the lines backwards. Go up four lines. That's the last paragraph of page two. Follow me as I read. You can read out loud too also if you want. We're going to be looking for the setting for this scene. Remember the setting is the place where this this scene takes place or where the place which is where or the when it takes place the when can be the time of day it could be the time of the year it could be um uh, what year it is what century it is in this case it's it's telling us what century this is taking place and i can't remember what the the year was I believe it was one the year 1,200 and something. I don't know the exact date. So, on the bottom where it says Rudy and Walter. Rudy and Walter stopped on the way downward to kneel for a moment before a humble cross, built beside the path. Their father had taught them to do this. Then they chased each other down the well-worn path. There's a uh, alliteration, is there? Well-worn. When they reached home, the goats had already huddled into a pen made of three large boulders. Here they fell safe from prowling bears and wolves, for in those far-off days of the 13th century, many wild animals roamed the Alpine mountains. So do you know what time, what time period this is in? It's far-off days of the 13th century. We live in the 21st century. So 13 all the, tw all the way to 21, how many years ago was that? That was probably like, what, 700 years ago this story took place? Somewhere around there? All right. Sometimes the story or the scene will tell us um, when. Sometimes it tells us where, and sometimes it tells us both. In this case, it has given us both when and where. So in the far off days of the 13th century, many wild animals roamed the Alpine mountains. It tells us where the Alpine mountains, the, that's those mountains right there. Where are the Alpine mountains? They're very, very, very tall mountains and they are in Switzerland. This story is taking place in Switzerland. And you know where Switzerland is because you worked on the maps, the maps of Switzerland and Germany and the United States. So this is where the story takes place. So I'm going to move my camera over to the whiteboard so you can see the quote that I wrote down, but you can copy it right out of the book. Just make sure that you put the quotes around the what you take out of the book. Okay, so this is the quote right out of the book. When we write a quote, something someone said, or in this case wrote, Conrad and Mary Buck wrote this story, we have to say it exactly the way they say it. We can't change it. We can leave out some words, and if you do, these three dots means I left out the beginning of the sentence, because it didn't. the beginning of the sentence didn't tell me where or when, so it's not that important when we're talking about the setting, all right? But before we start, we quote, because I took this out of the book, and I put my ellipses saying that I left some words out. 
And I don't have to use the uppercase because this is not the beginning of the sentence. The beginning of the sentence was over here that I, le that I left out. So for in those far off days of the 13th century, many wild animals roamed the Alpine mountains, comma, and then I'm going to close with a quote. This is the end of what I took out of the book. Then I'm going to abbreviate page, or you can write out page if you want the whole word, P-A-G-E. But I, I put P period page four. This is where I got the quote from, page four. Notice that Alpine, the A is uppercase because that's the name of a place. We always use uppercase letters for names of people or places. So Alpine is uppercase. So this is the setting for our scene two. So let's continue reading on page four. We finished the first paragraph. We're going to move on to the second paragraph where it says Rudy darted. That means he took off. Um, but before we start, we're going to be looking for the last week. Uh, we looked for the character of father. So we looked for a sentence that told us how, what kind of character father had. Now we're going to look for the type of character that mom has. And mom's name is Hedwig. Hedwig sounds kind of funny because it's in another language. It's, in, it's, another, um, it's another country. So it sounds, to them it's not as strange, but to us it sounds a little strange. We've never, I've never heard that name before. Mother's name is Hedwig. So we're going to look for a sentence or a, a quote that, ex, that tells us what kind of person mom was, all right? So we're going to begin on second paragraph. Rudy darted. He ran, in, he ran into the hut. As Walter grabbed a wooden bucket which hung on a peg and went to milk the goats. After his task was completed, he latched the gate which enclosed the pen and carried the foaming milk bucket into the cabin. This was but one room with a big table in the middle. A candle glowed on this oak table polished from, polished from years of use. Okay, the next paragraph, there are several words that are an alliteration. For an alliteration, I'm going to let you choose what you want to write for alliteration. So as we read and you see two or more words that start with the same consonant, you can write those for your alliteration. Remember that whatever two or three or four words you choose, you put quotes around it and you put the page number where you found it. We're not going to finish this page today. We're going to finish it on Tuesday. So if by Tuesday you haven't found one, I will give you one at the end of the lesson. All right? So the goats gave. There's one right there. The goats gave lots of milk tonight, mother, and said Walter gaily as Hedwig, his hair-faired mother. I'm sorry, fair-haired mother, Fair-haired means that she had very light-colored hair. So Walter uh, said Walter gaily as Hedwig, his fair-haired mother, took the bucket of milk. We waited, there's another alliteration, we waited for father until after the vesper bell rang, but he did not come. And I hit the target, mother, right in the middle, the very last time I shot. I did, really, I did, mother. Rudy will tell you. But why shouldn't you? The elder son of William Tell hit the bull's eye. Hedwig laughed as she leaned down and kissed her boy. Walter knew she was teasing, yet her words pleased him. Still smiling, she poured the milk into two carved wooden bowls and cut thick slices from a huge loaf of rye bread. Walter and Rudy soaked the bread in milk and ate hungrily. All right, so we read a little bit about Hedwig. What do you think her character is like from what you read. Let's go back. The paragraph where it says, but, so Walter is saying, I hit the bullseye. And she said, why shouldn't you? You're the oldest son of William Tell. He, um, Hedwig laughed as she leaned down and he kissed her boy. Do all moms kiss their boys? Probably not, but they should. Okay, moms love their sons. 
So this mom loves her son. She kissed him. She laughed because she was teasing. She said something uh, kind of in a, a fun teasing way. Walter knew she was teasing. Yet, even though he knew she was teasing, her words pleased him. Why did they please him? Because she, was, she did it in a loving way. Still smiling, she poured milk into two carved wooden bowls and she cut thick slices from a huge loaf of rye bread. Okay, that also gives us the character of a mother. She, she cut bread for them. She probably most likely made it herself. She poured, she poured their milk for him. Moms, you know, they love their children and they will do things for them. They wanna make sure that children eat healthy and are full, especially when they're working hard outside or, outside or playing hard. So that is the, the quote that we are going to fill in on our paper on the very first line here under characterization. It's too long. We're not going to do the whole thing. We'll just take the first phrase and we'll write that down and I will show you on the board how I did it. Okay, for characterization, we chose mom and we're, we pulled a quote out of the book. That means we're going to put it in quotes because it's not our words, it's someone else's words. So we're going to start with a quote. Mom's name is an uppercase because it's a name. Names of persons or places, we start, we begin with an uppercase. Her name is Hedwig. Hedwig laughed as she leaned down and kissed her boy, period. Walter knew that she was teasing, yet her words pleased him. Comma, close with your quote and put the page number that you found it on. In this case, it's page four. And I see that there's a glare here. This is him, pleased him, H-I-M, if you can't see that, and then there's a comma. All right, so for spelling group number one, when you write this, you can stop right here at this period because we still have a, an understanding of what her character is like just from the first sentence. And then this sentence tells us more. Yet the other one where she poured the milk, she was smiling and pouring milk and cutting bread for them. That also tells us her character, but that's too much to write as long as you understand what we're doing, all right? So spelling group one, stop at the first period, everybody else right up to here. And that is the character for Hedwig. And also I'm gonna leave the alliteration, the style of writing. It goes under the yellow letters where it says style, the author's own special way of storytelling. You find an alliteration and write it down. Just remember to put it in quotes and put the page number you found it on. At the end of Tuesday's lesson, if you don't find one, I will give you one. So on Tuesday, you're, we're not gonna finish this today. We'll finish it on Tuesday. I'm gonna give you um, spelling group two and three. I'm gonna give you, we're gonna look for the plot and the leading idea. Spelling group one, you'll just have to do one of those, uh, probably just the plot, all right? So we'll finish this on Tuesday. You can bring this on Friday with you, but I'm gonna give it right back to you. So if you wanna keep it at home in a safe place, or just leave it in your uh, multi-subject folder. Just leave it in there. I'll make sure to send it back with you so, you, so we finish it on Tuesday, all right? So we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.